Hey everyone, Irix Guy here. Wanted to give a beginner's tutorial for how to use a GoPro camera. Now I've been using, uh, just to give you a quick background, I've been using GoPros for the past few years. I actually was not an early adopter. And what turned me on to it, I was on YouTube and I saw all those, uh, all those videos that said GoPro. And when you watched them, and I watched a lot of them for travel. I like to travel, so I was watching a lot of travel videos. And I noticed how cool and how immersive all of those videos were that were shot with these GoPro cameras. So I did my research and I ended up purchasing my first GoPro a few years ago and it was a GoPro HD Hero 2 Outdoor Edition. Now since then I've also purchased a GoPro HD Hero 3 Black Edition which at the time of posting this video is the most high-end uh, GoPro camera on the market. And what I want to do is just go through some of the basic maybe you've got a GoPro, maybe you just went down to the store and bought one you haven't even opened it yet. If you haven't done that, check out my, uh, my videos. I've got a video, How to Remove the GoPro from the Packaging. I know that sounds kind of silly, but it can be a little bit intimidating at first. I've also got How to Open GoPro and a lot of other GoPro how-to videos. It's on youtube.com forward slash irixguy. So this is the channel I'm on right now. So subscribe to that. Check out my GoPro playlist. ton of goodness already there. And if you don't see something that you're curious about, send me a message on YouTube, and I'll do my best, if I'm familiar with it, to post a video and not only respond to you, but respond to everyone. So, uh, the first thing you notice here, uh, this is GoPro HD Hero 3 Black Edition. So it's got this lens cover, this black cover. That's going to have to come off where you film or you won't see anything. But it's important to keep this on when the camera's not in use. And the reason is, is that on this HD Hero 3, now this is black, but there's three models. There's HD Hero 3 Silver, White, and Black. All the same body, look the same. There's just some different technical uh, components that we'll, we'll go into later. That's a more high level thing. But uh, like I said, the how to open the GoPro, this was the thing that confused me the most first uh, when I got this HD Hero 3. Because if you look at the arrows, uh, this arrow is pointing back towards you. This arrow is pointing that way. So that, uh, that arrow that's pointing to the side makes sense. So you just push it. But the one that's pointing back towards you actually should be pointing up because you're actually going to pull up and then that'll release this locking mechanism and let you open the GoPro. Now I know this video is probably not the best vantage point to see how I open that. So check out my other video, How to Open a GoPro. You can see it right in your face. I did it on a table. Uh, just a very uh, easy to see demonstration. So let's take the GoPro out of the case. Uh, the first thing that I want to familiarize everyone with, and, and this is something that you're going to have to do, you're going to have to charge the battery. So when you get your... Uh, get your battery charged and I've got another video how to open how to install and remove a battery so check that out but it's got this little battery door on the back so you can take that out if 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 you need to replace it with another battery while you're in the field or you can uh, or you can just keep it in there if you've only got the one battery that came with your GoPro and charge it by removing this little side door pops off and that's where your, uh, your little charging cable that connects to a USB port that came with your GoPro 3, that's where it plugs in. So you charge the battery uh, while it's inside the GoPro. And now also on the side is your micro SD card. What you need to be sure, and it doesn't matter about the brand, but when you get a micro SD card for this, you've got to look at the specifications. And it's important that the micro SD card says class 10, 1 0, 10. Because if it's not class 10, it's not going to work properly with the camera. And at a high level, without going into too much technical uh, mumbo jumbo, the class 10 is just the speed of the card. And if you're using a an inferior speed, it's not going to uh, it's not going to record the video properly with the camera. So uh, that's what's in the side. This little door is easy to easy to lose. I always recommend when you're finished charging to put that uh, door back on immediately. And then also. Uh, you may want to check out, I've got a video on this, it's an inexpensive kit from GoPro.com. It's called GoPro Caps and Doors. For some reason, when, when you get a GoPro 3, they didn't include a cover to put over your lens when you're charging. And that's super important because most people are charging their GoPro on their desk with their computer's USB port. And most people drink like a Coke or something at their desk. And you can imagine this GoPro sitting down like that and then inadvertently putting a, uh, you know, a, a glass or a coke or something on top of it you could potentially crack the lens so I highly recommend 
uh, getting that inexpensive caps and doors kit from GoPro to just prolong the uh, the life of your camera. So now let's uh, now that we've charged the camera, let's power everything on. So to power on the GoPro, uh, the front button here it's got the little I guess it's the international power type symbol. It's a little circle with the with the line. So just kind of push down on that. And you'll hear it beep, and then you'll see on the GoPro's display you'll see a selection of, of modes. Now this is where you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with the uh, with the GoPro's interface. So one thing you may want to do, and this is completely optional, but if you have an HD Hero 3, it has built-in Wi-Fi. Now what that means is that it can wirelessly communicate with your smartphone. So if you have an iPhone or an Android, what I would highly recommend doing, and I've got a video on how to set this up, I would highly recommend downloading the GoPro app and putting it on your phone and using it to set up your GoPro. Because going through this with these two buttons, that's all you have on the GoPro itself, can be a little bit cumbersome until you become familiar with it. But before you even start using your GoPro, and this is something that a lot of people don't, they think they can buy the GoPro and it's, and it's good to go. And it may be with some of the newer GoPros. I got this when it first hit store shelves. And there's something on the GoPro called firmware. Now what firmware is at a high level, it's software that's inside the camera. When they released the GoPro 3, the firmware didn't have all the functionality. For example, the app, the GoPro app for your phone that I just mentioned, it, it wouldn't work unless the firmware was updated. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you start using your GoPro and setting it up, customizing it, making it, you know, making it configured in the way that you want it to be is go to GoPro.com and download and install the firmware update. Now I've got a video on how to do that on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash irixguy. So feel free to check that out. It's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, but once you get everything updated, uh, there's a few things that I would recommend. If you've got the, uh, the HD Hero 3 Black Edition, which is the highest end camera, you're going to want to go into your video settings. What I always shoot in, and this is just personal preference, this black edition will go higher than 1080. It's even got a higher resolution, but since none of my TVs are greater than 1080, I have no real need to record at a higher resolution. And that's something to keep in mind. If you're recording at a higher resolution, the file size is going to be greater. So what that's going to do is require you to have greater memory card, uh, larger memory cards to record uh, lengthy clips of video. And it's uh, 1080p still consumes quite a bit. I use 64 gigabyte memory cards and get a decent amount of recording time out of them. Now the setting that I use, since I have the black edition, is uh, I use 1080p 60 frames per second. And I like the 60, and by the way, if you have a HD Hero 3 white or silver, you're not going to get 60 at 1080p, it'll be 30, which is still awesome. The 60 frames per second, um, and that's one of the main uh, selling points of the Black Edition, because the Black Edition is the most expensive, but the 60 frames per second is double that of the 30 frames per second at 1080p that the other uh, GoPro HD Hero 3 um, camera models are capable of. And that's important because frames per second, that's how many... And to put it in simplistic terms, if shooting 60, you could think about it like 60 quick photos in a second. Whereas the other HD Hero 3s, the white and the silver, are shooting up to 30 frames in a second. So it's half of that. Where that is a value, if you use uh, video editing after you download your, uh, uh, your videos to your computer, I use an iMac and I use Apple uh, Final Cut Pro 10 software. But when you send it to your computer and you're editing, if you speed up the video, you know, make it fast, fast speed, or you slow it down, slow motion, that 60 frames per second is going to make that adjusted video speed look more fluid because you've got twice the frames per second of 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second video is perfectly good for retiming as well. And most, I mean, unless you're a hardcore video person, in the real world, you're probably not going to notice that much of a difference between 1080p 60 frames per second versus 1080p 30 frames per second. But if you have an HD Hero 3 Black Edition, if you plan to be retiming videos, I highly recommend 1080p 60 frames per second. But if you just want to use, uh, if you don't care about retiming, 30 frames per second may be, 1080p at 30 may be the best choice 
because you're going to get more uh, more recording time out of your memory card because it's it's not as many frames per second. So that's that's an important setting. The other setting is uh, I never and I know a lot of people use these for still photos. When you scroll through your camera, and, and mine's on the video setting now, but you push that power button once. If you held the power button down for a few sec for for a second or so, it would power the camera off. But you just quickly push it. And you can go through the menus. There's a little camera, that's still photos. If you want to take a still photo, you just push top button. Likewise, if you wanted to start a video recording, you would push the top button. But uh, you can just push you push this the power button to go through all the various options. I usually just do video, so I keep it on the on the video camera, and I know mine's good to go because it says 1080 and 60. So 1080, 60 frames per second. So if I when this is on my head strap mount or whatever, I push the top, it starts recording, I push the top and it stops recording. I don't really use it for still photos, but a lot of people do. And uh, but you can go through this, you can push the bottom button to throw scroll through the various menus, and if you get to settings, you can push the uh, top button to go into it. Settings on this current firmware it looks like a wrench. So I'm not going to go into that. That's uh, that's something to explore on your own. But the main thing is when you're first setting up your GoPro is to choose that uh, that video quality setting. And again, like I recommend, if you're using Black Edition, I would probably go 1080p, 60 frames per second. If you're using uh, any of the other GoPro cameras. I would use uh, 1080p, 30 frames per second. But it's a uh, it's a really easy camera to learn, and you can also control while it's in its waterproof case. You can control the uh, the camera the same way. It's got the button on the top, and then the button in the front. It's just in a waterproof uh, enclosure, and that brings up another very important fact that a lot of people may not realize, and that's there's different back doors that come with your camera with your GoPro. Some of them have holes in them, and some of them don't. The one that has a hole in it is called the skeletonized back. That one, if you're filming out of the water, is going to give you a lot better, um, a lot better audio. It's going to pick up more audio. But when you're in the water, you've got to use a waterproof backing, otherwise you'll destroy your camera. And for that reason, since I do a lot in the water as well as, well as out of the water, I pretty much always have my waterproof back on, and to be perfectly honest, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to put the skeletonized back on and it's going to pick up more audio. Sure, it will. But what a lot of people don't realize is that with this waterproof backing, this camera still does an incredible job of picking up audio. And it's a situation where in your video editing, whether if you're using a Mac, you may use iMovie or Final Cut Pro. If you're using a PC, you may use a, a Windows Movie Maker or Adobe Premiere or something like that. You can always adjust the volume. You can increase the volume during your video clips. So that's what I like to do. I like to just always record with waterproof backing on. That gives me the peace of mind that my camera is completely protected from both water and the elements. And I'm still getting the audio. I just may have to bump up the volume at certain points uh, within the video to uh, to hear it as, as well as I wanted to. But um, these cameras and you know you're, you're probably and I'm hoping you're even more excited now after watching this these cameras are incredible, and like I said, I wasn't an early adopter, but when I started watching the videos, and then I got my own GoPros, you'll get hooked. So check out my other videos. I've got all kinds of videos I've shot with them using different mounts. All of my videos I include within the description what I use for filming it, and kind of as an FYI, so that if you want to attempt the same thing, and you know, I'm, I'm going to post a lot more videos, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's youtube.com forward slash irixguy got a lot more videos coming soon, and I welcome your feedback. Do you have GoPro questions? Um, did you just buy a GoPro? Maybe you're considering buying a GoPro. Let me know what you're trying to figure out, and I'll do my best to answer, because I really like this stuff. It's a lot of fun. So uh, thanks for watching, and share this video with others, too. Y'all have a good day.